Hey guys, this is Cass with Tape, and today you join me for episode 3 of Kerbal Wars, and we start in low Kerbin orbit um, with our carrier, the Odin carrier, which has been renamed correctly as I did spell it wrong last episode with an E, um, not an I, which was very foolish of me, but it has been renamed, and whoever, the man on the ground who controls the naming of the computer has been fired. Uh, <laughs> And, but anyway, uh, we need to go to the moon, because, as you may remember from last episode, the Hermes carrier has been stolen. Because it was attacked in the first episode by um, some sort of rebel force who has a disagreement with our organization. And, um, yeah, so we need to go and get it back. Well, not get it back, because we don't need it. It's, not, it's broken, and it's ruined, and they're just using it as a station. So we're not really going to get it back. We're going to thwart the rebels, and maybe even just destroy the carrier, so it can't be used anymore. Because we have no use for it, because we're going to build a proper station. Um, and we don't want them having a rebel station, because that's not very... Uh, no, it's bad for us, basically. So, uh, skipping ahead, this is uh, just us heading on our way to... Um, well, this is the, the carrier heading on the way to uh, the moon. This burn took a long time, because it's a pretty bad frame rate, um, especially while recording. And it only has six nuclear engines on a very heavy spacecraft. But, um, I did, obviously, I'm relatively patient with these things. Um, so, I got my intercept. Um, I think, I don't know how long the burn took, it was probably about five or six minutes, um, maybe a little longer, but with bad frame rates it took a little longer, probably more like ten minutes, so it was, it was a little time, but ten minutes isn't that much time to sit around, so you know. Anyway, we got our uh, encounter with um, the moon, and we're just trying to move our trajectory onto the path of homies, um, well, the thing we're trying to kill, um, and... Oh, and now it's time to send this scout fighter after. This scout fighter was, well, it's, yeah, it is a scout fighter. I think it's called the Jackdaw, because, um, well, it can fly through the atmosphere like a bird. It does fly quite nicely. Um, it was originally just to defend the carrier until we put it up to fighting strength, but I decided I want some, wanted something a little more heavy in this conflict. Um, so this is going out to the moon as well. It only has two missiles, but um, hopefully those will be of some use in destroying some, heavy th uh, some heavier weaponry. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I do need to perform a plane change once I've moved in properly. Um, of both the carrier and the, um, and the jackdaw needs to also make its plane change. Uh, funny thing, actually, is, um, you'd think, uh, based on what you can see here, the jackdaw being way behind Odin, that it would, um, get to the moon after Odin, but because it took so long to do the burn with the Odin spacecraft and it, um, and because uh, I, I'd moved around the orbit so much, it changed my path slightly. The Jackdaw's actually going to beat Odin to the moon, um, which is quite interesting. I never really think of... Um, I never really think of uh, something like racing to a planet, because you kind of think once you've got your orbit, it's sort of a fixed amount of time, but obviously you can have a faster or a trajectory and things. But it was just... It, I don't know. It amused me, uh, at least. So yeah, let's just... Um, Perform our, perform our plane change. This is a much smaller burn, of course, because we're very far away from Kerbin. Um, but yeah, this actually does turn quite well, as you can see there. The, the bad frame rate doesn't uh, show it off that well, but it does turn reasonably well, which, uh, which is quite nice, because you want it to be relatively maneuverable. Um, because it is, for all intents and purposes, a combat vessel. Um, but it doesn't really need to turn to point its weapons or anything. But anyway, now the jackdaw is... Uh, making its plane change, and you can see how it's catching up with Odin. Um, I think it does just get its intersect earlier in its orbit, so it's not actually going a lot faster than Odin. I think it might actually even be going slower. But anyway, I did overburn because I'm foolish, um, so I'm just correcting with RCS to make uh, make our burn perfect so we can get to the moon and, uh, well, start wreaking havoc and letting slip the dogs of war upon these rebels who took down our carrier and then, well, and then <laughs> stole it. I mean, anyway, we are too well skipping ahead again. There is obviously a lot of skipping in these episodes because this was about two hours of footage I cut down. But you don't want to see all the boring stuff, or maybe you do. But I do a lot of things where you can see all my maneuvers and things. This is more about the battle and the story and things. But anyway, uh, Jack is in orbit, and now it's just a matter of getting Odin into orbit. Another long burn because, again, not a huge amount of thrust. But uh, well, in space you have a lot of time. And you don't need a lot of thrust unless you're building something like a fighter which needs to be able to avoid things quite quickly, but this doesn't. This is just a big juggernaut which can absorb damage, although Hermes didn't absorb that much damage um, in the first episode, although those missiles I did fire at it. Well, no, the Rebels fired at it were, uh, 
were very high powered um, and pretty deadly. We don't actually carry anything like that in uh, the Goliath Corporation. We should look at getting something like that because it's actually more effective to use one of those little Rockamax engines than it is to use solid rocket boosters. But anyway, we are in orbit. We just need to intersect our um, our target now and oop, turn the speakers off so it doesn't bleed. But anyway, yeah, we're just going to move into interception. I'm a little in fr well, a lot in front of the target, so I'm just going to perform a pretty hefty burn so that. Um, I will be slowing down. Obviously, the weird thing is I'm trying to slow down, so what I'm doing right now is speeding up. So that's because my period of orbit will take much longer, and I'll arrive in roughly the same place as Hermes. I do want to keep the carriers apart in this conflict, um, because there will be a lot of lag if I don't. And I'm going to keep them not just load range apart, but probably two load ranges apart, so that there's a, probably a middle ground where I can have a battle between fighters, and there won't be any, you know, it won't be so much lag. Um, I don't know how logistically possible that is, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, you can see I can get my intersect there if I just make a prograde burn here. Um, and then we'll uh, move into position uh, against the Hermes. And Jackdaw will follow up later. I'm going to uh, move in my Scorpions first to try and take down all the uh, enemy fighters. Um, I think they have three. So, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to take them down effectively and then to bring in Jackdaw to deal some finishing blows, maybe to the carrier, as you can see there, Hermes, or um, or maybe just one of the fighters if need be. But, yeah, that is just my extra fighter, which means I outnumber them, and I have far more armament than the um, enemies, I think, because I brought a lot of them. They, uh, they've just been sitting around the moon with the armament they had originally, which is about one loadout per fighter, I have more like two loadouts per fighter, um, except for the Jackdaw, of course, which just has one, but they are high-powered, so it's fine. But anyway, we are here, and we must prepare to take on this enemy. Um, but yes, um, the, before we, pref well, while we're preparing, the Jackdaw needs to also prepare to move in on the enemy, uh, so you can see how I'm just making a quick retrograde burn, um, so that I'm in the right position, so that I can do a prograde burn and arrive hopefully after the battle, but maybe during. Because these battles take a while and I don't want to do too much of it at night, because that's not so fun to watch. And that is the main thing about these videos, you want to see fun things to watch. And some things may take place in the dark in episodes, but I'm going to try and minimize that, because I don't want to use any mods, just not for any real reason, just because it's... I don't know, I just kind of felt like doing stock. But anyway, we've had worrying signals that their blade spacecraft is headed for our Odin carrier, and you can see this heavy fighter is rather menacing and looks like it has some speed with all those engines and has a lot of RCS as well. Um, we don't get a particularly good look here, but it does look like it is moving in to attack the carrier or our fighters or something, but uh, it does have two missiles um, up there and they look similar to the Jackdaw's missiles, so uh, those could wreck some havoc. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to stop this before it arrives at the Odin carrier. And that's exactly what we're doing now. Um, we've got to scramble, uh, scramble one of our fighters. We're going to get Obrim Kerman, um, out of the, uh, out of the hitchhiker storage container. Um, and we're going to move him over to his scorpion fighter. Um, and it's already loaded so we can just jump right out and go and attack that, uh, fighter. Because, um, well, we don't want to get anywhere near the carrier. Uh, and if, uh, if I can't hit it, hopefully I can at least draw its fire, because it'll hopefully see me as a threat and fire at me before it gets to fire at the carrier. Because I don't want it, I don't want any more shots at my carriers. These carriers are expensive, hard to get into orbit, um, really hard to get into orbit. And, uh, I, and we don't want to lose another carrier, it's our ship, this is our flagship right now, and it's, uh, well, full of crew as well, we want to keep them safe, um, so yeah, Obram Kerman has decided, well, it has been decided that Obram Kerman will engage the target. So here he goes, out into the vast void that is, um, well, that is space, and we'll deploy our solar panels. Um, hopefully I will have time to, uh, retract them when the blade attack, well, if the blade attacks us, because, um, we don't want them getting smashed, um, and although they can get smashed when they're stowed, it's less likely. Um, so yeah, let's activate our engine, our ion engine, all the Delta V in the world, and head towards Blade 1, which sounds rather menacing. Um, we expect that it's called Blade because of its blade-like wings, um, which could probably do melee damage on a carrier. Anyway, skipping ahead, we arrive at the site of Blade 1. You can see it lurking in the distance, although kind of masked by um, the blackness of space. You can see it glinting. Um, but yeah, we are taking our time to uh, make sure we get a good shot in on the blade, which uh, will hopefully, you know, result in, well, result in a kill at least. Um, but uh, while we were doing that, um, Blade was already prepared, so he opened fire. 
um, we've got a Kerman in there opening fire, but it does look like it missed because the Scorpion's a very small spacecraft. So it does look like it's missed, which is just great because those were the only two missiles it had on board at that point. It might have more back at its carrier, but right now we are safe, which was lucky. That's the nice thing about these um, fighters. Although they're a little outgunned, they are very, very small and hard to hit. But anyway, let's fire away our... Um, our missiles, but oh my god, we just lost our solar panels. I think it debris. Yeah, we got we lost three solar panels. No, four solar. No, three solar panels to the debris, the shell casings basically that came off the blade. But it did look like we hit it. Um, but it didn't look like it did any damage. So we did get a hit, which might shake up that pilot. But um, but yeah, we didn't. It didn't look like we got any damage. We were just too close. I can't believe that. The shell casings, the, the things I'm ejecting there I call shell casings because they basically house the um, missile. And I know they're not actually shell casings, but that's effectively what they were. And that's what was floating towards me and I didn't put the, uh, well, Ubrim didn't put his spacecraft in battle position, which was very foolish. Um, so he, so he's damaged his fighter, but it is still functional. It can't use its iron engine at full thrust, but it can still be a key player in this battle if need be. Um, so I'm probably going to leave this at the carrier um, to defend the carrier so that it doesn't have to do any long maneuvers with the ion engine because it'll take twice as long now. But yeah. But we have warded off the first attack from the rebels. Um, the blade will probably go back to the Hermes carrier with its tail between its legs. Um, probably shaken up by the um, shot we did get in. It wasn't particularly clear because there was an explosion at our spacecraft, but it looked like it did hit it because of the way the debris flung off. Um, so that's good. But anyway... It's time to attack that carrier. It's time to send out the, our other two fighters, our other unwounded fighters. Send them out towards Hermes in a squadron. Well, a squadron. There'll only be two of them. But I think it'll be best to move in, um, you know, two at a time so that I can get multiple shots in. And if need be, they can return to the carrier and reload because they do have more loadouts back here. Um, so, yeah, this is the first fighter getting on its way. Just exiting the exiting the, um, the hangar bay. Uh, I do like leaving those shots in because they do look quite nice. But yeah, this is just activating its engine after I'd um, sorted everything out and pointed myself in the right direction and uh, unfurling its solar panels. And we probably, well, I, uh, I'm sure that he won't forget to um, uh, is it stow away his solar panels when he comes into combat because he doesn't want to uh, lose another one of, uh, uh, well, he doesn't want to damage his fighter like uh, Oberyn did. But anyway, yeah, let's move off to uh, Hermes, that I am um, controlled by the uh, perfidious rebel rebels, the rebel scum. <laughs> it does sound like I am the emperor, <laughs> the empire, um, but no, we are the Goliath Corpora Corporation. These uh, these rebels are just terrorizing us because they think we'll control space unfairly or something like that. But uh, it seems more like they're being unfair with their attacks on us. Although we did send a fleet out gunning them, but that's called fighting fire with fire. Um, so yeah, that's this first fighter moving in now, and the second fighter will be moving after it. Um, I should really name these slightly better, uh, Scorpion, maybe Scorpion 1, Scorpion 2, and I think this one's actually called Odin Ship, because of the way KSP works. But yeah, the, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, these are, I guess you could have like Red and Gold Leader and things, although a lot of people do that, so maybe I'll think of a better system of naming my fighters, well not a better system, just a different system. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, well, I guess Scorpion 2 moving in as uh, the wingman for Scorpion 1. Anyway, skipping ahead, because it was a lot of drifting through space. Um, so I just uh, get here and slow myself down and do the same with Scorpion 2. Um, so that I, uh, well, so that I will stay at the same place as Hermes. So I can plan my attack and uh, move in and hopefully take out that carrier. Although I know they have got fighters left who we will probably have to engage. Um, but yeah, um... What are we doing now? Oh yeah, we're just nulling our velocity uh, fully. I, um, I'm not entirely sure what was cut out there, but I think it's just a matter of nulling our velocity again because an there was another maneuver taking place with another spacecraft, which wasn't too important. Um, but yeah, so uh, now here comes the Blackbird joining the fight. Uh, not too late. Um, we only had what we've only had one engagement so far, but it hopefully will be back in for the. Um, well, it'll hopefully be in the battle for the. Uh, final bit, the death throes of Hermes, hopefully, and not the retreat of Goliath. Um, because, well, Odin will not run away until it's out of ammo. Um, 
But yeah, it's just a matter of slowing ourselves down with those, uh, well, pretty inefficient engines, but they have a lot of thrust and they uh, work in the atmosphere, so it's very nice. I do like these fighters, although this isn't really meant for, you know, long-range fighting around the moon, but we didn't have anything else in orbit, so we just wanted more things. But anyway, over at Hermes, it looks like they've got another another one of their fighters being deployed. This looks like one of our scorpions, although it seems to be nose-loading its missiles. I can only assume it's doing that so that it can fire them one at a time, which is a good method because it has two missiles and it probably wants to hit both fighters. Um, so it's good to fire them one at a time from the nose, which is, you know, how these were designed so that they could fire two at a time like uh, these scorpion fighters or one at a time like, um, well, like the uh, other scorpion which is heading towards us as it's called Hermes Carrier Ship because of the way it's been renamed in the save file, but it's fine, we know exactly what it is. And you can see Hermes Carrier there in the distance and it looks like something called RHF-1, which I believe to be the Rebel Heavy Fighter 1. Which is worrying, because that is probably the fighter that uh, damaged, that you know, took out Hermes in the first place, and those are some very deadly missiles, um, since they did rip out all of the internals from Hermes, making it a husk unable to defend itself, making it easy to steal and make a station. Um, but anyway, it looks like we are in a range of the uh, Hermes carrier ship now, hopefully we'll get some shots in, uh, but who will fire first? It's whoever can get a good shot in first, I guess. Um, I've actually forgotten, so this is, will be surprising for me as well. It looks like we're going to get our first shot in before it did, and there's a two shots away, and there's a hit. Thank God we finally got a hit in this battle. Um, that's pretty impressive, much better than that scorpion. These are very hard to hit, but um, there, is a, there are very various methods you can use to aim quite well. Um, but anyway, it looks like it's not too damaged, and it's firing its first shot off at scorpion, and it hit us as well. Um, doesn't look like any debris flung off. Uh, their scorpion looks like looks as if it lost uh, a solar panel, but we look fine actually. Um, and it's oh, it looks like it's gonna fire again. Um, yeah, you can see. I think it did lose a solar panel down there when we hit it. But anyway, it's firing its missile again. But it does look like a miss. It must have fired in haste. Um, must be a rookie pilot in there. <laughs> That's a subtle jab at um, Jebediah. But uh, anyway, it looks like it's returning to base now. That's what I would do with my tail between my legs. Um, and spinning around, it looks like its SES has been accidentally disengaged by the buffoon piloting it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's just watch this leave now, I guess. Yeah, you can see a solar panel's been hacked off, which does mean it can't respond quite as fast. It's not, it's a bit superficial, really, but it does mean it can't respond quite as fast because it can't really burn its ion engine at full power for that long. But anyway, here comes our Blackbird. Um, Jackdaw, even. God damn it, I get my birds confused. Yeah, this is, um... This is the Jackdaw spacecraft, uh, um, rendezvousing with our other Scorpion or Odin Carrier Mark II ship, um, and that's uh, and that's the one that still has ammo. So we're gonna, you know, stage an attack run now. We think that they are probably out of ammo, save for their RHF one. Um, so now it's just a matter of uh, moving in first with the uh, Jackdaw, because this is the heavy fighter which can deal some serious damage and hopefully at least take out. Um, RHF-1, because we know that to be a very deadly uh, spacecraft, which carries, well, it c usually carries, I think, four missiles, but can probably carry more. It could probably carry easily eight, although that would be quite cumbersome. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty deadly ship, which can, uh, very versatile, and ca usually carries very high-powered missiles capable of decimating carriers. And decimate is the right word there, because it means to destroy 10%, and it probably destroyed more like 10% of, um, I say more like 10%, I said I meant to say more like 20% of um, the Hermes carrier, so yeah, it truly can decimate spacecraft. Um, <laughs> use the word right. Anyway, it's time to move in for our final attack run using our iron engine, catching up with Jackdaw. It can move, it can accelerate much faster, but of course there's no resistance, so we can, uh, we can go at the same speed. But anyway, skipping ahead to the sunrise, which I, I just moved through the night because that's no fun. But yeah, you can see here, this is RHF-1. It looks as if it's only, oh no, it does have four missiles lined up by its sides for, clearly for multiple shots. Um, and it looks like it was heading for Jackdaw. We've intercepted a signal that it's heading for our heavy carrier. We clearly scare it. So it's time for the, um, the Scorpion to move in because we're not going to let it get near Jackdaw, because I think Jackdaw has a serious chance of taking out um, Hermes, um, if I'm smart about firing. But anyway, let's fire our missiles. There's, there go our two missiles away. 
Um, but foolishly, I left the um, targeting computer on pointing at target, which means it oscillates very slightly, which makes it inaccurate. So you shouldn't do that. You should use it to align, but then use just a bit stability assist. But it has fired at us, and it has, and we took a shot. But it, we don't look dead. We don't look too damaged either. Um, you can see here. Yeah, it looks it looks okay actually. Um, it, we can't really see that much damage. But yeah, this did miss because it starts to oscillate if you leave it pointed at a specific thing that is moving. So it's best to use um, just stability assist to hold position. But it oh, looks like it's firing another missile at us. Oh, that could be deadly. It's very far away now. Um, oh, it's coming in. It looks pretty bad. Oh, it's a miss. Thank God. That probably would have killed us. But anyway, it's time for Jackdaw to fire up the Hermes carrier. And those look good. But I think we might be too far away, I think we might be too inaccurate, and they've diverged, and we've missed. That was foolish of me, but we do have more ammo back at the ship. Um, and now, an apology, I, uh, some of the footage just got corru well, got corrupted. It's not much footage, it's just the RHF-1 firing its, um, I think it fired two missiles at Jackdaw, and they did no damage. So that's what you're missing now, which is a shame. I'm very sorry I lost that. That was uh, my fault. Um, but anyway, in the next episode, we will be um, finishing this off. We The uh, engagement is over there. Fighters are out of ammo. So we will move in with our, um, probably with our scorpions again and try and just finish them off because we do have more missiles. Um, and I, yeah, I think we, I think we still have six missiles left to fire. Maybe destroy the Hermes carrier and that'll be a cleanup operation. But that will be in the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you will come back for that. But yeah, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.